Hi everyone, this week's Disney Infinity tutorial comes in two parts and the reason for that is we're going to build an entire level from start to finish. Uh, and as you can see this is what the mission is, we're going to infiltrate the base, we're going to grab a ship, we're going to fly into the heart of the base and we're going to destroy the reactor. So it's a big, big uh, story driven uh, event where we're going to blow up the reactor, a bit like the Starkiller base. Now I have actually submitted this to Disney for the community and that community runs out at the end of September so if you are liking what you see and you actually like this level I've given you all the instructions how to build it but if you do please tick the like option because I'm trying to beg with uh, the Disney guys to publish this up just before they close the servers so if you do like what you see make sure you tick the like option because I'm going to try and get them to uh, to release this before the months out so as you see you've got to get into the base and we've got to steal a ship and pose the man. We've got a number of guards. And then we've got loads of them. Holy moly. Now Poe may be a good pilot but he's no good at shooting so we're going to just avoid all these guys. And let's grab the Falcon because I love the sound of this. Listen to this. That's such a cool sound. Right, so we've got this base here, and as you can see, the uh, landscape planet. And I've tried to base it on like the Star Killer from the Force Awakenings. Now, watch this also. We're going to do a nice little flip. Oh, turn around. And we now have a hole here and where we can fly into the base, and we're in. Try not to crash on the conveyor belts. Oh, we could get a very tight corner here, slow it down. Just going to try and do this without crashing. Woohoo! We've even got turret guns in the tunnel. Flying through. And I've got it wide enough just so we can fly so you don't have to be that good at flying. And in the middle here we have a reactor. And that reactor has a number of uh, objects to it. So I've got to fly around now. I've got to shoot the reactor. And as I shoot the reactor, we'll shoot those bubbles. You'll see I've got spinning metal bits on it as well. Now the more bubbles I shoot, the more the reactor starts to blow up. So you'll now see that the explosions start occurring and they're random, they're not in the same place, a couple here. Now also, with the more explosions you get, the harder it is to see those options. So we've now got more explosions occurring, oh, and now the rest of the base is starting to explode. So if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure you tick the like box, because hopefully Disney will release this before the end of the month. Right, now we've got to get out. Flying through, watch the base, everything's exploding as we're trying to escape because the reactor's gone. Yeah, I'll fly quickly, come on, it's all going to blow up, come on, time it. Did that quite quickly, everything's blowing up. It's going to blow! Woohoo, and there's your level. Now the final level, when you'll see at the end of part two, has a few little extras that are thrown in, which you'll have to watch part two to see what those extras are. But like I said, we're going to build this from scratch. So, the big question is, where do we start? Do we build the land first? Well, let's find out. Now, I find that sometimes what I used to do when I was building some of my levels, I used to try and get the envir environment done first, and then I'd start going and adding the objects I wanted to do. And then I found out it ran out of memory, or it got too complicated, or it got out of the way. So, you actually do the opposite. We'll start with the focal point first where all the action occurs and then we can see what we can add. So the first thing we're going to build is actually the reactor, the central piece. That is our main bit. And to do that, I'm going to use some basic shapes. right? And I came up with this layout. This is the way I've gone. So to do some basic shapes here, and you see where that square is. That's my center square. I know that's the center of the box. Okay, so you'll see it. I've just done it around the Disney Infinity box here and I've got my little square. That's the base of my reactor. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the base. So I've just created a little box. I'm just going to move that to one side because that's when it loads up. Okay, and now I know that that is the center of our level. And I'm going to get my little curve areas and I'm going to put this across here. Okay. So that there is the base of our reactor. So I just put some basic shapes, nothing too tricky here. And all I'm doing is plotting them there. That's it. Yeah. So it's nothing complicated. It's just building. This is just building. And you can make your reactor look any way you like. If you want my true honest feeling here, I think we should have made the reactor a little bit fatter. 
uh, make it a little bit more obvious. It was a bit too narrow, but uh, I didn't have much time, so I thought we'll have to get that one done. So we'll now have a pillar going across, so we'll have the pillar going up, and then I need a gap in between those two because I'm going to put some orbs in there. So let me go back to uh, my creative toys. And we go all the way through to our various options. Where is it somewhere? Da -da -da. Right, here we go. Here we go to our gameplay toys. We've got various different orbs you can use. Use gold one, green ones. My personal one, I prefer blue. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use, it's totally up to yourself. So I'm picking these two here. And I want two here. And I'm going to have spinning objects around those. So I want to just position them on the screen. So I have like a barrier to make it harder for me to shoot. And again, how you build the reactor is up to you. You can make it any way you like. It doesn't have to be this shape. You're, it's just as the style I've gone. You can choose how you want. Now what I'm going to do is just going to position that up. And that's going to be the middle section. And then I'm going to have another gap with another two reactors going to go on top of that. So continue with my basic shapes. Uh, I'm now going to place that, uh, obviously that box there. And I'm now going to get the cylinder tool. And we're going to mirror the other, the rest of the thing, the opposite side. So I'm going to move a gap, making sure I leave a gap so I can put two more orbs in between. Uh, that's the cylinder one. So I now need the straightforward uh, tool pillar. Yep, and that then goes straight to the top. So that now is the height of our reactor. So all I need now is those boxes with stripes around the edges to fill in the edges around the side. Okay, so we now know how big our reactor is going to be that we fly through. So we're going to put our our rock stuff on, uh, I say rock stuff, our terrain over the, over the top of it. So there we go, finish it off. So we now know how high the place is going to be. So what we're going to do now is put some more orbs into the actual object. So let's go uh, back to our basic gameplay tools. And I'm going to use the blue one again. And I'm going to put those in the middle. Now in the Star Wars film, uh, Return of the Jedi, and I'm sure somewhere in the Force Awakenings, we have to shoot the oscillator at the side. Okay, a little side panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some orbs down the side to give you a bit more other targets to hit. So I can have some objects at either side, and uh, I think in total I use 18. Uh, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to use these little uh, platforming toy tools to get a stick out, some pipe work. And you notice, if I look at the bottom, it's too low. So I'm going to put this a little bit higher up. Uh, and I'm going to place that, in that on that side there. Okay. And I'm obviously going to have the exact the same on the opposite side, so I'll use the bottom corner and I'll have that dropping down. I can't use the one below it because it, it doesn't look right, so it's going to be a little bit, a bit higher up because it's on the high eye box here. So I'm going to fix those two in using my platforming toys. And if I go back up using my arrow key, I should be able to reselect my orbs again. And now I'm going to place in on here six orbs. One, two, oops, three, four five and six which should just get me to the other box which is fine so I can use a corner option at the top there so if I go back to my platform tools and get my corner one if I grab that back there is my little oscillator at the side now I may repeat this a number of times in this clip but you can use as many orbs as you want we've used 18 for this clip yeah but you can use as many as you want so if you want five or four that's up to you now just be wary is because of the path being slightly high and it doesn't can't fit in the center it's not going to be actually symmetric so if I do my six orbs coming down you'll notice it's too short oh! so I need to actually add two more and this gives us our 18 orbs in total okay so we've now got all our orbs set up okay Excellent. So there are our, our tubes. So that there, as you've got, all the orbs all connected where we want them to be. So we now to need to know what happens when the user blows them all up. So we need to track when there's explosions. And uh, we want different things to occur at different times when they destroy certain numbers. So what we're going to do is go back to our creativity toys and I need three counters. Now these three counters are all going to count up to 18. Okay, but when they get to a certain number, different ones are going to do different stages. So I need three counters here on the screen. So I'm going to go down and put my three counters in. Okay. 
And it doesn't matter which orb you shoot, all, all the orbs are going to be connected to these counters. And every time you shoot one orb, each one of those counters will increase by one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is you're going to have to go into here, go to your first orb at the bottom. Okay, press your square button and do new connection string. Now this is where you need to be careful and this is where I can see a lot of errors occurring. Make sure you choose broken or collected. And on there I'm going to point to the first counter and I'm going to do increment by one. Okay, and that will increase by one. Okay, so I've now got that connection. Using the same orb again, same thing again as well. So I'm going to click on that option and do broken or collected, choose counter number two. So where's my mouse on it? Get my mouse on it. You've got to make sure you get it right. Yeah. There's a good way of checking it that you've done them all at the end, right? But it's making sure you get the right logic against it. So square button. And I bet you those that make this, some of you are going to make this mistake. And when you do new path connection, you're going to choose the first one, which is reset. And it's not reset. It's on broken or collected. Okay. Again, incremented by one. So we're now the middle one done by one. Like I say, each of these orbs will cap do each one of those counters. Okay, and that also is going to be incremented by one. Done. Okay, and like I say, all three of those are going to count up to 18. Now what we're going to do with this, I've got to do the same now for every single orb. So I'm going to go to the next orb now, and you can tell which one you're on and which one you're not on, because there won't be any matching joins. So new logic connection, not reset. So that's where you're going to go wrong. You're going to press reset like I just did. And lucky I spotted that, otherwise the whole thing would have failed. It's broken or collected. Can we choose... Counter one and increase by one. Uh, just in case any of you are wondering, yes, I did wonder why I'd chosen 18. I wish I'd chosen a few less, but I wanted the game to have a bit of length in there. I didn't want to just do one shot and shoot them. I wanted it to make it a little bit difficult for the user. So the more time and effort you put into it, the better the end result is, I find. So yeah, you may grudgingly have 18 or even more of them, but it, it just makes the effect cooler. So what I need to do now is go through every single one of those and connect each one up to increase by one. Now, if I showed this entire clip, it, take, it took me about 25 minutes to do that. So with a bit of video magic, I'm going to speed this process up. But like I said, there's always a good way of checking to say, have I actually got every single one? Have I missed one out? Okay, so let's just fast forward this now. And da-da, we've now done this now. Here's one I prepared earlier. But if I click into the first orb, you'll see I've got three lines. And as I go through each one, you'll see there's three connecting lines to all the counters. And that's letting me know that I've got all three of them connected up. So I go through, there's another three, and I haven't missed any off. The only thing I can't tell is if I've got the right logic. Did I choose break or reset? Now I'm hoping I've got them all on the right one, but each one of those now goes through to that setting. So I go through every single one, and they're all connected up lovely. So what do we use? This bottom one here, we can use the final one. Okay, that's our magic number. So we need to tell it what is the limit on there. So we go to the properties of that counter and we say, right, the target for this is 18. Okay, when we destroy all 18 objects, then we know the base has gone. So that's going to be our trigger. When we reach 18, that has been destroyed everything. Yeah. So I'd like that to be visible. Fine, I'm happy with that option. Okay, uh, I can't have it to be seen. Now the other two. We're not worried about, they are going to go up to 18, but we want to say, well, when this actually gets to a number less than 18, so we're halfway through the stage. So in this case, I'm going to change the properties for the, number, the counter number 2, and that's going to be 12. So when we reach 12, we haven't finished yet, but we're getting close there. So what we're going to do is when we get to 12, I want explosions to occur. Okay, I want some random explosion events, so we know we're getting somewhere on the list. But I don't need you to see that being displayed, because... We see the other counters showing up anyway, so we don't want to make that visible. And with the first counter, I just want a few explosions occurring, so I go to properties of that, and I'm going to set that to six, and I'm going to do visible off. And like I said, what counter one and two, I don't need to be visible, because three is always going to be visible, so it's always going to show you going up. Otherwise, we'll have three sets of the score, and it'll be a bit confusing. Right, now we've got the counters set up. Before we go and do the magic with there, I got a little bit carried away and thought, do you know what? We could do some cool things to do with um, the reactor pile. I'm just jumping to this section here now. Is what we use? We use a path tool, and on this path tool, I'm going to set this up to, to try and make shooting these targets a little bit harder. So we've got the side ones that are easy, but these ones are tricky by doing a circular path. So I'm going to have some objects spinning around this to stop me shooting the targets. So 
because I want four objects, so I want a square shape going around it, I'm going to have to create four paths. Now I'm going to lay up the paths, stack them up on, touch, on top of each other. And as you'll see here, I'm just going to go around the edge of the square so I know each one. And I'm going in the one direction. And I need three, the starting point and then four points all the way around. So I've done that option on the screen. Yeah. Now, for every route that I do, I need an exact opposite. So I've got it on this side starting. So if I go to the opposite side, you'll notice I can't do it because the path there. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. And I want to go in the same direction. So look at how the lines are moving around. These two go in the same direction. Yeah. So I've got to keep going to the left in this particular case. Okay. So I need my four points. Line them all up. It's important I keep them all lined. And we set these round. Okay. Now, what I want to do also is I want this object to spin round, but I want the user to be able to still see the orbs. So I'm going to have two panels go round one way and two panels go the other way. Okay, so the opposing panel is going to be either side. So I'm just going to go a little bit lower now, so my third row, and you'll notice this is, again, these, I've done those two sides, so it's on the middle pit. But this one is going to go in the opposite direction. And that means at one point there'll be a little window appearing as they spin around where they will show you the two orbs. The, the player will go, hold on, I can still see something in that shot. And as they try and shoot it, the wall's going to be in their way. Okay, again, just do it around. You can't go all the way around. You just stop once you've got it to just that particular point. And I need one now, and it needs to match up on the opposing side. Now, don't worry that the paths aren't all on the same level because when we actually add the object, we're going to then move, use the vertical height and adjust the objects to them, which will be made apparent very shortly. But again, this now goes in the same object of the other two. So now I've got that done, to make my life easier, I'm going to go to each one of these path tools. So going to each path tool, okay, I'm going to go to the properties of those tool, I'm going to switch them off, and I'm going to make sure they're looped. And as you'll see there, look, a perfect circle now appears around the object and come out. And I'm going to do that for each one of those. Now the tool being off is purely to help me set up the boxes. Once I've finished, I'm going to switch them all back on, but they're going to stay looped. So switch them off and make the item looped. Yeah, I'm going to do the next one. So all these four. Now occasionally, if you've got too many objects already built, you sometimes might have to create a button to, to do the press and reset like I've done in some of the other toy boxes. You'll see I'll use a little push button when you press it. There's a reset option. And you can do that. I was trying to be clever and get around doing this. You also may find that this bit's just a bit too too much, so you may not want to bother with this one. You can leave this whole spinning object routine out, and that will speed up also your development of your toy box. I think I just got a bit carried away. Uh, I thought I need some sort of object to make it a little bit tricky. And like I say, if you all like this one and uh, you can download it, you, you'll have those spinning objects in there. So in your gameplay toys, you should be able to unlock your concrete, your bricks, and if you look at my, what's, what, what's the level I did, how to build a, a detention block, I showed you how to connect these, these tools to the actual paths. So I'm going to link four options to those four paths. So just place them all so I know all the same side. Now using my spark tool now, I'm going to click onto each one and I'm going to connect it to a path. So new path connection, pick, pick one of the green path tools, there's the first one, great. And I'm going to connect it to path and it appears horribly sideways yeah so if I point to the actual shape not the tool go to the properties of that shape what we can do here is go to toy box path right what we do is we switch it along the orientation it twists along the line but it doesn't fix the problem but I think it's the same problem with the ships if I rotate this round, if you look at my pirate ship one you rotate the ship round, it will now follow the path and that will now go around the edge so that's our first one so I now need to do this with all with all the other three so click each one path connection Go to the next one, point it to the object, if I can find it. You can see after all these tutorials, I still haven't mastered the spark mode. Click it onto here, and again, go through the same properties again. Go into properties, change the orientation, if I can say it properly, and then also make sure you then turn it to rotation 90 degrees, and it will rotate round. And we need to do that for all the, all the other shapes. So we're going to do the same for the In fact, before I add the other shapes, what you'll see is I'm actually going to line those two objects up. What you can see is I'm going to bring the one on the, uh, on the right side, so I'm going to lift it up. Now, for some strange reason, when I was doing this video, and you can tell I did the voiceover afterwards, I did the wrong option. I was meant to lift that shape up so it's in line with the box, so they're exactly in line with the box. 
Uh, and if the substrate region, I go to the properties of this box. I think I had a, uh, uh, a Muppet mal uh, malfunction. My brain just decided not to work. And I, I moved my vertical level for that object in the wrong direction. So I adjusted it to it. Excellent. I want to move it two places. That'll be spot on. So if I come out now, it's all moved. Change the vertical line. And then I realized I did the opposite. I moved it down when actually I want them both round the same thing. Yeah, I actually wanted to keep that one as it was and bring the other one up instead of down. So just to recap what I should have done, so I don't need to cap this back. I should have moved that one back up. So if I go back onto this the property of this tool, so make sure I pick onto the shape and not the part tool. So there's the shape. Go back to my properties, the toy box to, path bo uh, toy box path tool. Go down to vertical. I actually wanted that to be fine. One of those will be bang on correct. Yeah. It's the other one that I wanted to bring up. So I click on the object again. Go to the properties of the path tool on that one. And then I bring that up. Okay, and then when we look, ugh, I've gone too high now. I really did have a meltdown doing this bit. But again, it was showing you different things you can do with targets. You could create a shooting gallery with moving objects that you have to shoot with, and these are things that are blocking the base. So it just gives you different ideas. I'm showing you things how to do it with a reactor, but you don't have to create reactors. You could create uh, an item where you've got different orbs and you have to be hand salar and shoot them and things move in the way. I mean, that was one of the videos I think I was going to do. But again, it's just giving you an object here. So I'm now going to link the other paths to, sorry, the other walls to the, the other paths. So in this case, I need to move that object down. Now, while I'm telling you I'm doing this, while you're creating a, a toy box like this, and strangely enough, the reason for the slight delay for this clip coming out was, at this particular point, while I was talking about making sure you save it, the whole video crashed, and I lost all the voiceover, I've got to do it all again. Uh, let's just say there was a few harsh words being mentioned. So, even doing videos, stop and save them, keep them, get, save them. when you're doing your toy boxes, save them as well doesn't matter what consoles you've got there's no console in the world that doesn't crash yeah uh, they sometimes get confused uh, and sometimes it's not the consoles fault it's the actual either program itself so make sure you save as you go on yeah if you don't save when that moment happens yeah there will be tears and there will be very bad language so especially if you're doing it with your kids uh, last thing you want to do is see a grown man swearing because they forgot to save their toy box. So keep saving as you go across. Uh, and I would also, when you're saving a toy box, if you're happy with it's going, I have two copies run at the same time. Occasionally, my Disney toy box has been completely corrupted. So there you'll see, I have now have my shape completely surrounded. So what we need to do now, see it's all completely done, that's it, looks wonderful. I need that rotating. So what I've got to be careful now is I've got to go to each back of those paths and I'm now going to switch these all back on. Uh, a little bit easier than it actually looked like, actually, than planned. So if I switch these on, the first one was piece of cake because it's quite lower down. And there you'll see, you'll now see it spinning around and we're going to have the other one spinning around as well. One of them was a bit tricky. Move up to the next one, that's easy enough to do. Go back to the properties, switch it back on. Don't worry about the fact that they're all spinning at different times because when it loads up, it will all reset them up and they'll spin evenly, so don't worry about that. So there's two now spinning around. I get the first one. It is a little bit tricky. But okay, there you go, get that one spinning. Alright, so. Alright, the last one was a tricky one. Should have probably done this one first. Now while I get that object spinning on and changing that to switch on the item, I then repeated the exact same item for the ones above. So I, those four connected up and spinning round. I then did four more paths for the two objects above. So I then had a completed option. So I repeat this for the column ahead. But again, I've sped that across so I don't bore you with that particular part. And like I say, you can have them spinning round or not, or you could just leave two on if you want to. It's up to you. So we'll just jump forward now after I've saved this program. And now you'll see I've got four spinning around. And like I said, the reason why I had two going one way and two the opposite way, you'll just see a little glimpse of those orbs. 
and you can see them just flashing there so the user will see that there's some orbs there they need to shoot yeah so it comes in quite good so as they spin round now what we're going to do here is what will we happen once we get to these counters when we get to our 18 so let's go to our properties here we know that when we get to 18 that is we've destroyed everything everything's been done and so I'm not too sure what we're going to do. As I'm creating a story, I, I always think, well, so what am I going to do? What am I going to add? Well, I may have different routes here or different things that get triggered off. So I like to throw in logic gates whenever I can to try and group these items in one idea in case I change my mind or where I want things to happen. So let's go back to my creativity toys and let's get my, uh, my logic gate. Okay, and by chucking the logic gate in... I can say right once I reach the target that there is when I I know that the thing's been destroyed because I may want different things to occur I may want a timer to be introduced so we can do a new logic connection when we've reached our target of 18 can we input a signal here okay and that is going to be right that there is where I can control all the things I have going from here when I've exploded where there are other options I want or timers I, that I know now controls those settings right so we've blown up all the items so we need to tell the user they've done a good job they've done it so I'm going to use the text creator and yes here we go again this tool is not going to work in March next year so guess what you can do now though you can actually download my toy box uh, master template which is on the Disney community under new uh, I think it's newest releases it's about the eighth one down you can download it now get a copy of that that will allow you to carry on building uh, your stories so when we're going to do a, a logic here is when we get an output, can we input the box and can we display text one? So in here we're going to put a message in. I tend to quite like the banner option. Yeah, I quite like the banner setting. It comes in big white letters. I'm, I've grown to accustomed to that. So I've set that to banner and I'm going to put some text in and I've spin it up so it, I'll come up with the text saying, well done, dun, 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 in big letters you've done it. Okay. Now, if you look here, is I, I used this slightly wrong, but I'm just going to say, when I create the next box, I'm going to do another text on here. Could you find the next item? But I could have done an auto message and displayed the text line too. So what I now tell it is, now get out before it's too late. You've got to fly out the base before you die. So that's my next message. And I'm having that as a banner. But I could have combined that into one in the meantime. Because I could have done auto text, they'll play the one after each other. And I'll show you that little method a bit later on. But in this box here is I've displayed text one. After that's displayed, new logic connection. Uh, after text displayed, can you display text one? Yeah, and it'll do the next box. Right, so the user now knows we have a completion done. Right, so what's the next thing we want to do? Okay, let's put my little button in here. This little button allows us to test certain things. Okay, so if I connect that button to that logic gate, I can test us destroying those buttons. And that's another reason why I've separated the logic gate from that trigger. If I was using that item there, I'd have to have the count. Here, I can just put a button in here and say, if I press that button, what will happen when you destroy it? I can now emulate the destruction. Well done. Dun, dun, dun. So that there was a quick way of testing it. And that's another reason why I separate them into little pockets. So I hope this is all helping. Right, so going back to my creativity toys now. And I'm wanting a time delay. And I'm setting that up. Because what I want there is I'm going to set a limit that when you've destroyed everything, you have a certain time limit to get out before you die. Okay, so I'm going to do logic collection. When output, can we set this time delay? Now, until I build everything else, we'll set the delay. But that will be a trigger. If you don't get out of the base and fly back out of the system, you're going to die. Okay, that's, that's going to be the main object for that particular one. Okay, so these buttons here, I want different effects to occur. So what I need now is I need some uh, repeaters. So let's go through. I can never find them. I keep forgetting where they all, all are. Where is it? Not replay switch. Nope. Want a repeater? Where is it? Come on. Oh, there you are. There you go. The little repeater. Okay, so now three repeaters. Okay, these repeaters 
are then going to once the first one reaches six it'll start repeated every so so many seconds so will the next one and so on and I'm going to use my randomizer and my randomizer was the first one I used actually last week with my um, uh, uh, at at uh, clip I can call it at at now because I've just found out someone kindly posted a video telling me that at at are not AT&T's which I've been discussing in our office quite regularly now what I'm going to need is with these randomizers I'm going to use a an effects generator I've got three different types of effects and this is for each stage so I've got uh, three repeaters yeah three randomizers and each randomizer has three logics so what we say is when your target is six here when we get out to six up to six the first one reaches its target don't care if it resets it's done so we can do a lot to this when we get to here I'd like you to switch on that repeater so we do a new logic connection when target reached can we switch on this repeater right and that repeater is going to go on okay and what we're going to do is on that repeater okay if we go to the properties of that repeater it's every five seconds yeah we're going to adjust that accordingly I'm going to set that to three so every three seconds that's going to send a signal so I'm going to do a new logic connection on repeat I'm going to connect to the randomizer and that randomizer says to you can you action that so what we're then going to say with this randomizer I'm going to link you to each one of these three effects generators so new logic connection when you trigger number one can we have this effects generator though? can we play it once okay uh, and the reason why I choose the once is because it, I may have mentioned this in the other clips the huge explosion only plays once it's not a repeating tool and that's why I need the repeater you can't have the big explosion every two so on that randomizer on number two can you play once explosions this is only available when you do the play once option the huge explosion the real cool one that's why I need the repeater and if it's number three trigger three can we then have that explosion okay play once explosion so every three seconds it's going to pick one of those three points yeah and once it gets one of those three numbers the three explosions are going to appear on that side so for each of those um, effects, um, effects generators I need some locators so I'm now going to grab a load of locators yeah and I'm going to chuck a load in with each of them so let's give them four each So for each one of these effects, I'm going to do my square button, locate a connector, and I'm going to connect to each one of these particles. And I'm going to go through and do all those options. And I'm going to connect each one up. So that will allow me to do, basically what's going to happen is, it says, right, you've got up to six shots, uh, you've shot, shot six orbs. Those orbs will then trigger off the repeater. The repeater will then trigger off the randomizer. The randomizer will pick one of these three effects generators, and therefore, my explosions will appear in different areas so if you choose number one wherever I choose those locators explosion will appear in those points if it chooses two the explosion appears in those points and so on after the next three seconds it will do it again so sometimes it might be in the same point some might do different random so it gives you like different things are going off so I'm gonna to have to connect each all to each bleh, 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 my teeth are in gear there sorry I'm gonna to have to connect each one of these up so they're all linked through. So you see I'm linking every single one of these effects generators to their corresponding locators. So each one's got four. Yeah. And I've got to do the same for the, for the far one. Sadly, I need to do exactly the same. Repeat this whole process for the second counter and for the third counter. So you'll see me put these together here. And they are now all connected up. So there we go, that's all done for our first one. So it all connected through. So we now need to do exactly the same for the others. But you'll notice I haven't got enough space. So I need to put some ground in now. You've noticed I've chucked them all in, but I haven't got enough ground space to do. So what I'm going to do is before I add the other set hands up, I'm going to put my landscape in. Now, one thing I've done, I've been playing other people's toy boxes that I've seen them created. I find that my flying controls aren't too good, and I think that's down to me. And sometimes I find they're too narrow. So you'll notice here I'm using the big giant flat terrain and I'm going to make my whole central point quite large 
and it gives me a lot of maneuverable space in my ship so it'll give me an impression that I'm an awesome pilot yeah you'll see that when I did a clip at the beginning I was very slow on the very narrow bits because I'm not too cool at this so if I put these terrain this is going to be the core center it's going to be these six squares and that allows me plenty of room to fly around and move around and making sure that I'm not bashing into everything and being kicked out of my ship. I want to look at it as flow as possible. So I've made my space there. That's the core to be quite large. Yeah, you also notice that I haven't been caring where I stick all my logic. I'm just sticking them down on the screen. We worry about the logic at the very end. We hide it all out of the way so it's not a problem. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to move these logics because they're too close to each other. So I'm just going to move them about. I try to keep some sort of order when I'm putting them together. I'm just moving these back and then I'm going to add locators to these items and I'm going to do the same thing again like I did with the other one. So I now get my locators. Da -da -da. There's my locators. There you go. And I'm going to give them. And again, you can have as more. You don't have to have four. You can have more if you want. Okay, so they're all now set up. So I've now got to do the same link like I did with the others. So I've now got to go on to here where this target is reached, which we know was uh, 12. Yeah, so when that target is reached, so new logic connection, can we then start this repeater? Now to try and make it a bit random, I could change the repeater to be a different time. It doesn't have to be three seconds. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. So the other one was three. This one could be every two seconds. So they should then get the same explosions at the same time. So if we go to properties on there, can we switch that repeater on? So go back to the property of that. So when we say on repeat, can we switch that on? And can we do action the randomizer? Okay. So the property of the first one was three seconds. Yeah. So in this case, we can change the property of this one. And I, I can probably set it for two or for at some point they should if I set it to two then they will meet up at some time at the same time and then I'm gonna to have to link the randomizer to each of the logic gates so new logic connection on one and then I'll link all the uh, effects generators to their corresponding locators now I'll speed up time so you don't see me have to do all that again so I've now got them all connected so that one's now connected to all those boxes. So that's our number three. And they all do the same thing, by the way. They all do the huge explosion. None of them do anything different. Now that button there to test it, I can get rid of that. So there I have got all my logic set up, ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to build the rest of the base. Because I now, before I place those locators, I need to know what I'm going to do. Where am I going to position those locators? And I do need a bit of the scenery to plot those explosions. So let's move that around now. Now I have some uh, scenery built and that happens to be the uh, core reactor. So before I put any other stuff in there, let's move some of these locators around that reactor. So what I'm going to do is click on the first reactor. I'm just going to click on the X and I'm going to position this where I want some of the explosions to appear. So this is going to be set number one. Yeah. So all I'm doing here is just moving the pointers across. And you'll notice it's a lot easier doing it this way uh, than doing it for all the other, actual other items. So what I mean here is I used to put the locators in the position I want and then connect the logic. It's a lot easier to create the logic first with the pointers and then move the locators afterwards. That I find a lot quicker and a lot better to, to uh, well, just a lot quicker to do. Also, when you position the locators, don't try and think about them too much because otherwise what tends to happen is it becomes very uh, symmetrical where the explosions appear and just chuck them in, you want somewhere at the bottom. So I'm focusing all the first point of... Uh, the effects generator to appear around the base of the core. So on the first wave, when we reach six, if it picks number one, the base will blow up. If it reaches number two, it's going to be the middle section. And again, it could be what random section, one of these two items. 
So I'm just going to reposition these locators for these two parts. So you'll see here as I position these little boxes. But it, um, like I say, uh, position them about. What we're then going to build on from here is we're going to then build um, the remaining base unit, the actual trench that we fly through. But as we put these locators on, we'll position these all across, find them different places. Uh, and if you find that, do the logic first and then build your object. You can, you then got more idea of how much space you've got, how much room you've got left to build, play with. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of pitfalls. And if you watch my clip talk too, uh, you'll see here I'll discuss when things don't work too well and, and because I've used up too much memory for this clip. So I've now done the second number and they're almost around the top part of the reactor. So I'm positioning these up around the top. Now remember, there will be a ceiling on top of these, so that's not going to be too good. All right, that's that one done. Okay, and then we'll do the other ones. Now the other ones, I'll actually say like the ground's blowing up as well. So we can position some of these around on the ground. Now all the other sets of locators, we're going to position around this whole arena. So this whole square platform, I'm going to use those other locators to have explosions going around us. And if you remember the clip at the beginning, and that's why I show them at the beginning, so you've got some sort of context of why we're using it. When we put other shapes in here, we can move those locators around to fit in those areas. So I'll have explosions appearing around the side of the base as well. Okay, and we'll just, so again, randomly chuck it through. The rest of the, it looks like the ground's blowing up. as it's blown up to the screen. Right now I say we'll do the other locators a bit later on but what we'll do now is we've got the base, we've got the reactor, before I start filling all the tools I need to find out what is the route that we're having to fly out when, we, when we've blown up the reactor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my uh, terrain tools, I'm going to go to my little menu and go to my terrain option and I'm going to pick the large, the largest square block we've got, the one I did all around the edge of this particular platform. And again, my first reaction when you're doing this, and this is when I did it the first time, was like, let's keep it nice and narrow. It doesn't have to be this big. Make it nice and big and bulky. It means you don't have to be accurate with your flying. So if you've got different people with different age groups playing with the game, nice big loads of space makes your flying look really good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to plot out the path that we're going to fly into this area. So this bit is basically is the, the base unit of our box. So I'm just going to go around building the route that I think you're going to take as you fly in and I'm going to randomly put them different places. Now I did say in my last clip which was the one to do with the uh, AT&T, the Rogue One attack, that I wasn't going to do a Star Wars clip, I had something different to show you. Well I've got that lined up and that is coming soon but I thought I should do this clip on I like the trench run. Because uh, Star Wars Battlefront, which happens to be another game I quite like, it's a mixed views on that game, but I, I do like it, I find it's a lot of fun, it's a, it's a fun shooter anyway, so I quite like that one. Uh, they just released a new DLC on that one, which is the Trench Run. Uh, it's not bad actually, uh, but I thought, you know what, let's make our own one, so we don't have to buy the DLC, yeah, but it's my, my variation of, the, of a Trench Run, but we've done it for the Starkiller base instead. So let's put this part on. I'm just now just plotting the route, and this is the route we're going to fly along as we fly around into that centerpiece. So I'm just positioning these boxes around the side. So like I said, the other clip will come uh, later next week, hopefully. Get these all positioned. There we go. So there we go, we've got our little circular route going through the base. I'll put a little half pint in there. And at this present moment, I'm not worried about what the terrain looks like. And again, don't go for the, because you can spend hours trying to make it look pretty before you work out what actually is doing it. So I'm just going to move that a little bit across. I'm going to just reposition that across better. That's it.
and we go across from here excellent right so we're going to do a number of couple of speedy up moments now in my video editing because you'll see here it's very slow and what we're going to do is we've got our path set up so what we're going to do uh, over the next section is now fill in the path yeah that is my trench on where we're going to fly into so what we're going to have to do now is build the walls up of coming into this particular base so we're going to have to build all the walls going around this base into here into here i'm going to be flying through into this screen and that's where i want you to fly into the system yeah so we know that when we finish with this our land is going to be actually this high we know when we click that to the top that is how high we're going to put the land on top of everything yeah so i can fit that on that particular box so if i just move that back up so position that back at the top and move it straight up all right so i don't know why i'm centered on there but if i go right to the very top that's bang in the center that keep going up there you go that is how high our little turret is going to be when we finish we're going to put that land in so we're going to put the base going all the way around the, the box here you'll see we'll fill this in and that is what our base is going to look like now this gives me i'm putting this in, this in around the box so i get to know the idea of how i've got to now build the walls up at the side to fill this ceiling so i'm going to have to build a wall all around this tunnel all around this box to fill this in and then I'm going to put the landscape over the top and fill all that in so I'm just going to do the first section in and then I'll speed through it as I start building the walls but I'm going to put some walls in here and get that to work so I'll just jump through to the next stage and show you how I'm doing there so now I'm going to get some vertical pieces and put the wall in and now I'm going to have to go around the whole base putting these walls across then I'm gonna to have to use other bricks as well to fill in the gap between the two and the and the, and the height so I'm gonna click all these in and then I'm gonna go and put in all the various uh, bricks inside to level that up and there's a small brick I'm gonna show you in a moment that you fill in those gaps but I'm gonna speed through this part because you've got no idea what I've got to do I've just got to fill in the entire uh, scenario so here I'm just got most of those filled in and you'll notice which is a key part this section here this is the bit I want the user to fly in at and this is the last bit of my wall I've gone through all the walls and then I've done like a slope coming up at the end and there's a particularly in your terrain tool which has got diagonal sections uh, what you see at the moment these are the the last bricks that I used which was the gap between the base and the top so I used these bricks to fill in all the edges where it was too short and I've now filled the entire base in with all the walls and I've now got that nice slope going into it from that start and there's only one piece that's got this vertical slope that allows you to do that there's quite as you'll see quite a number of bricks there so let's jump to the next stage with it now complete and I've got all the edges filled in so just jump to the next part and as you can see now I've now finished the base yeah the base has got all the level on the top I filled all the walls in and everything's done so what you're going to see now is I'm going to go back to my landscape tool because if you notice as you wander around the base you can see there's an underground section to it so what I want to do now is I actually want to add landscape to keep coming out so you can't see anything underneath it so as you'll see is I'm going to put these blocks in and I'm going to keep adding these around the, the base I'm going to pull them through and you'll see all the walls now filled in but I'm going to keep going out round and I'll just keep going round and making sure it's depth so that when you look at an angle you cannot see that there's anything else it just looks like a flat level right so as you'll see I'm coming in these particular boxes I'm filling these all in right and so when I look at an angle I, I fly around at an angle I don't want to be able to see any section of the ground underneath so I'm going to keep spinning this item around on the screen now if I jump through you'll see it so you'll see the little gaps there's all my walls that I've done so let's just speed through this process here now and we'll show you the end stage and this is our first part of our video so I'll just get there to the next section so now when you look I've got all around it so when I'm spinning my camera around you can't see underneath it you can't see it just looks like I have a flat level and when I spin the angles around either side you can't see the base now I still have the tunnel which is great which is there yeah but you don't have anything else on the screen uh, and that's the beauty of it so I've got that as where I can get the use of the flying but it doesn't matter how I move the camera around I can't see the ground bit 
yeah I don't want to be able to see that whole section so you'll see there I've come quite a way bit out and that's so the user won't want to fly over it and just go just spin around you can see everything there's all filled in all the bar boxes in so they can't fall through it doesn't have to look tidy but we now have our landscape set in so we've got we now have got to add in the the base we've now got to add in the interior for the tunnels we've got to do the filling in and the color in the landscape but you'll see the whole route now has all been passed through so all that there is all set up and done so that there is our landscape hidden from the user that they can't see now that little edge is a bit too much I might want to bring it through so what I've just done to finish our little valve clip one off let's have a little fly through to show you what it looks like so now I've got the walls through I've done a little x-wing I'm going to fly in I've chucked a couple of little things in already just a little train to give me a little picture so you can fly through this tunnel yeah we go around here so I've chucked some other objects in this is stuff that's from the uh, Star Wars Origins just to give you an idea I put some pillars in already on the screen And this is our first part of the clip. Now the next clip, which is going to be up on the same time as well, is going to help finish this off. Now I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Remember to like it and uh, I'll get the other one and we'll start with part two. Many thanks. Cheers.